Good morning. This is Walter Stridick with Unitronics. Just giving a quick sound check to confirm that you can hear me and that you can see my screen. If you could uh, just let me know using the questions window or the chat window, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Again, I'm just doing a quick sound check. So if you can hear me, if you could just put a yes um, in the uh, question window, that would be great. We'll get started in a few minutes here. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. It is uh, Wednesday, the 24th of April. The flowers are blooming, spring is on the way. So uh, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes with us to talk about programmable VFDs with Unitronics. Uh, I believe everyone can hear me. And hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, if you cannot see my screen, let me know using the questions box on your dashboard. And with that said, I'll uh, I'll continue. Again, if there's any questions as we go along, there should be a questions box or or a questions window. You can. Uh, type your questions in there and we can um, get uh, moving on with today's webinar. We're going to spend some time talking about VFDs from Unitronics, uh, VFDs in general. Uh, the the uh, breadth of our VFD product offering and then get into a couple examples of programming VFDs um, for, um, for usage in the field. Joining me today is Thomas Gomes. Thomas is our Senior Application Engineer and Motion Control Specialist for North America. Um, thanks, Thomas, for joining us. You can see his email address and his phone number on the screen. And I am Walter Stridick. I am the Motion Control Product Business Development Manager for North America. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Unitronics for our PLC and HMIs, uh, the Vision Series, the Unistream Series, Samba, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have also um, integrated into our product offering IO link products and motion control products, specifically servo motion, drives and motors, and also uh, variable frequency drives. And we've made a couple changes to our variable frequency drives. Uh, we've added a, a new line. Um, that I'll discuss here in a moment. So we're getting stronger, we're getting better, we're becoming, uh, we're, well, we're, we're listening to our customers, our distributors, and hopefully providing a good value uh, to those who purchase our product and to those who sell our product. 
just a quick overview on the VFDs that we offer. Um, what you see here on the screen is what we call the B1 series of VFDs. These are smaller units uh, that have a building keypad. There's a remote keypad option available. Uh, these are DIN mountable, DIN rail mountable, or flange mountable, as you can see in the picture. If you wanted to um, look at the whole VFD product line from Unitronics, this screen tells a great story. In the middle, you see a highlight of the horsepower range for our B7 series of VFDs. So for the B7, our newest series, you get uh, horsepower uh, starting at one and going all the way up to 670 horsepower. Of course, the larger units are only available in a 480 volt three phase uh, model, but the uh, smaller units are available with the 480 volt three phase or the 220 to 40 volt three phase. And all of the B7 units are available with a safe torque off circuit. And that is a standard. Uh, on the right side, you can see uh, our B1 and B5 series of VFDs, uh, the B1, Offering starts at 120 volt single phase. We offer that in half horsepower, one horsepower, or one and a half horsepower. And then moving up from there, we have 240 volt single phase with STO. We have 240 volt three phase with and without STO and 480 volt three phase again with and without sto going all the way up to 150 horsepower in in range we are also offering in the b7 series a 600 volt model uh, for those of you in canada so uh, please reach out to me or thomas if you have questions or needs for a specific horsepower range or if you have questions about part numbers and pricing, I'd be very happy to work with you uh, to discuss that. Again, the B7 series is our newest product offering introduced earlier this month. Uh, they are only available in three phase uh, power options. Uh, whether it's 240, 480, or the 575, 600 volt units. You can see the power and horsepower ratings. Uh, STO circuit is included. As an option, we are in offering multiple communication capabilities in the B7, and we are also offering uh, closed loop control uh, feedback cards. And in addition to that, optionally available are extended IO uh, cards for the B7 units. The LCD uh, keypad is a, a 16 line text graphic uh, LCD, easy to read. So some very nice features on the B7. We're very proud to offer this to our customers. When it comes to communications and feedback, here's a listing of the options. We can communicate CAN open, EtherCAD, Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP. We also have the IO card and then um, encoder feedback cards, uh, resolver, sign, cosine, multifunction, incremental. So, and there you have our part numbers. So at this point, uh, I'd like to move on to programmability of our VFDs. Um, each uh, series of VFD is, is a little different. 
uh, in how you can program it, uh, but there is a lot of commonality. Uh, one uh, example of this is in the B7. We offer a tension control mode uh, with the optional uh, closed loop feedback card. You can program it for tension control. Um, that is not an option in the B1s or the B5s, but the B7 does offer that. There are different uh, ways of programming your VFDs. Uh, you can program it through the keypad. So pictured on the screen is a B1 series VFD, and you see in the middle of your screen, uh, there's a red circle around the keypad. So you can use the keypad and the arrows and the buttons uh, to program uh, the different parameters that are available in the VFD. And that um, you can set the run command <clears throat> in parameter 00.01. If you choose one, that's for your keypad entry of parameters. If you choose, excuse me, if you choose zero in the run command, you're going to be able to program your parameters via the keypad. That can be the built-in keypad like you see, or an external keypad that plugs into the VFD, uh, whether it's, it's an RJ45 uh, socket that's available behind this little plastic uh, cover, um, or uh, hidden behind the keypad in the units with removable keypads. So you can use built-in keypads or the external keypad to program. You can use the terminal block um, to send your commands. So you can use the IO, the onboard I.O. that you see on the right hand of your screen. You can set your parameters and then use the I.O. to run the different parameters. And the last way of programming and running your VFD is through RS-485, or if you're using the optional communication cards via those methods, standard for all of our VFDs is RS-485. As I mentioned earlier, the B7 series have available can open EtherCAT, Ethernet IP, or Modbus TCP communication capabilities. These are extension cards that you purchase as a separate item uh, that can be easily installed into the B7 series VFDs. So in running the VFD again, you can use the keypad, the, the run and the stop button. You can use IO to start and stop or you could use uh, your RS-485 terminals and control it directly through a PLC. Or if you have the optional cards, um, you could wire into the optional cards uh, to communicate to your VFD. So a wide range of programming capabilities are built into all of our VFDs. We're going to look at two examples today. The first example is what's called three-wire control operation. So as standard, or maybe what you're typically uh, encountering is two-wire control. And the two-wire control operation, you need to maintain contact closure so that the drive will run. If the contact is closed, the drive will run. If the contact is open, the drive will stop. So in two-wire control, you can have an engage switch. You can have a second switch for forward operation and you can have a third switch for 
uh, reverse movement. And you would have to leave this switch engaged or maintain that contact in order to make the drive go forward or reverse. Three wire control is a little different. The biggest difference that I would like to point out is that when you enable three wire control on your VFD, you only need momentary contact to make the drive run. So if we look at the next page, you'll see that um, switch one is your enable or disable switch. So you can, uh, you can engage this switch and keep it in the run position or disengage it into the disable position. And then to make the motor move, you set up your three wire control. Uh, for instance, switch number two is a momentary switch. You push the switch like a doorbell on your house and the drive will start moving forward. And then uh, when you're ready to reverse the drive operation, the motor's direction, you just engage switch number three. It's a momentary engagement. That is the big difference between a two wire and a three wire operation. I'll dive into a couple screens here that show you how to set up the parameters in the VFD for three-wire operation. So again, simply uh, put, you have your switch one for enable and disable, that is wired to this terminal. Then you have switch two and switch three, so that would be S2 and S3. And then your commons can all run to the lower terminal strip here uh, under, under the common, uh, either common port. And then you need to set your parameters. So first you can set up your hardware. You can get your switches, whether they're push buttons or proximity switches or what have you. Um, then you wire those into the VFD, and then you need to set your parameters uh, for the proper control of the switches. So using a B1 as an example, you can see that you set your speed control mode to number one. So that's parameter 00, .00 and there you would set a one. Under parameter 00.01, the run command channel could be keypad, could be terminal. For this operation, you would want to set this to a one, excuse me, to a one, which is terminal operation, and the LED would start blinking. You set your max output frequencies for your motor in the upper limit of the running frequency. And then you set your S1, your S2, and your S3 terminal function selections. So S3, excuse me, S1, which is parameter 05.01, you set it for three line control. And S1, again, is your enable disable switch. Parameter 05.02 is the setting for S2, and that's for forward rotation operation. So when you momentarily engage the switch, the VFD will start operating in a forward rotation. And then you set parameter 05.03, which is for your switch number three. And that is set to number two, which is a reverse rotation operation. So if you momentarily press switch number three, you're going to go in reverse. If you momentarily press switch number two, you're going to go forward. 
and then you have your enable and disable switch located here. Again, the run command channel would be set to one, which would be for the terminal operation so that you can control your VFD using your IO, your onboard IO terminals that are located here on the right. I'll take a little pause here. Uh, if anyone has any questions, they can uh, type them into the uh, question window. If we don't answer your questions today, we are recording the, the presentation. We'll keep track of your questions and get back to you um, in the near future. All right. Next up, the second example that I would like to discuss today is using the simple PLC mode that is built into the VFD. Now, Unitronics being a PLC manufacturer, our PLCs are very sophisticated with many uh, hundreds if not thousands of functions uh, that you can program uh, using our PLCs. Within the VFDs that we offer, I consider it a simple PLC that is basically used uh, to set speed and running time. And you can, you can program 16 steps of speed and running time. So please note in the simple PLC mode of, that is built into our VFDs, there is no true logic capabilities and it is not as sophisticated as the PLCs that we offer, um, the Unistream, the VisiLogic, uh, or the Vision series and the Unistream series, et cetera, et cetera. But if you just want to run speed and time and direction, and you uh, have 16 or less uh, distinct steps, you can use the onboard simple PLC uh, to do that. There are a couple different options available. Um, I have a, in my example number two, an oscillating motion uh, that perhaps your PLC is running a stirring stick uh, in a chemical operation. So you have a, a vat or a vessel filled with chemicals and you need to keep those chemicals uh, stirring uh, to keep them homogenous or you need to keep them in movement so they don't solidify. So uh, very uh, simply uh, put in this example, you have one step where the VFD is moving forward and a second step where it's moving in reverse. Um, I have uh, programmed the VFD to run forward at 100% of the speed allowed. And I'm going to do that for 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, the simple PLC is going to move to step number two. And in step number two, we're going to reverse the direction by, uh, and also we're going to reduce the speed. So the speed is going to be 50% of the maximum allowed setting. And it's actually a negative 50%, which indicates that the motor is going to operate in reverse. It's going to change in direction and operate in reverse. And we're going to uh, do that movement for 10 seconds. And then I've arranged the PLC to run cyclically so it's just going to keep 
uh, operating step one and step two, then back to step one and step two, and operating in a cycle until someone uh, presses the stop button. There are other modes of running, as you can see. Oop, wrong way. Let's go, well, I'll show you that in a second. But in essence, you can do cyclic running or you can run via time. So cyclic running will keep operating, keep repeating until the stop button is pressed. Or you can run uh, for a certain amount of time uh, and then it will stop until the start button is depressed. So some of the parameters that you need to perform this oscillating motion um, are shown on the right side of your screen. So we're doing a speed control mode of one. We're doing a run command channel uh, in terminal mode. And then we're uh, setting our frequency command for frequency A uh, as set in the PLC program. Here in parameter 10, uh, parameter, uh, the section of parameters, uh, chapter 10, are the PLC mode operations. So we're running a cyclic running. Um, if we lose power, we're going to have memory. So it will pick off where it left, uh, it'll pick up where it left off if you lose power. For speed number zero, we're running at 100%. And the running time for step number zero is 10 seconds. And then the next step would be speed step number one, where we're going at minus 50% to get that reverse motion and we're going to run that for 10 seconds so very easily with just a matter of a handful of parameters you can program the vfd and have it operating upon um, a go signal Again, I think it's important to remember that programming of the VFDs, you can change the parameters of your VFD three different ways. You can change the parameters using your keypad that is built into the VFD. You can change your programming uh, using your PLC. Uh, for instance, uh, a Unistream PLC using UniLogic, we have the function blocks built into UniLogic for VFD operations. Or the third method of programming your VFD is using what we call the UMI workshop software. Let me take a moment to discuss this workshop software with you. Here you see a screenshot of the UMI workshop software. We will have this available on our website in the very near future. Uh, today is Wednesday. We should have it available by Friday. Uh, if not, it'll probably be next Monday or Tuesday. But uh, let's hope that the UMI workshop software will be available in the VFD, in the motion control, under motion control in VFDs. And here you see a simple screen uh, showing uh, you can choose the model of VFD that you're running, and then the different parameter groups that are available. So you can um, use group 00, 01, 02, 03, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as you see in group parameter, group number 10 are the simple PLC and multi-step speed parameters. I'll show this to you live here in a moment. Uh, but you um, do have some features 
in the workshop that are valuable where you can compare the settings against the defaults. You can monitor the function codes during running, during operation, and you can also see the dry faults, if any, uh, if you're running the workshop software during operation. Let me take a moment here and switch screens to show you the workshop. And I just want to check and confirm that you can see the UMI workshop screen. If you can see it, maybe you could just t type in a quick yes into the questions window. All right, thank you, Ryan. So here in the workshop, you have your function codes. You can, uh, ha you have your control panel, which is where you uh, pick your VFD device. You can connect, disconnect. You can uh, change your communications, addresses, bald rates, data bits, and so on. Uh, you can also control, do simple controls of running forward, running reverse, uh, jogging. Um, when you are online with the VFD. And then you can uh, change your uh, view uh, to show the status bar, the status parameters that you see here on the right. There you are. So you can see those live if we were um, online with a VFD. You could see these changing um, live. And of course, the help window um which which is very useful device help will open up in a separate screen uh that you see here and you can uh use the search the index or the contents so if you had a certain fault code and you wanted to track the fault code you could put that in uh to determine uh, the different uh, codes that you see here on your screen and the possible cause and the solutions. So moving back to the UMI workshop, I mentioned here uh, on the function codes, you have the different chapters or different groups of parameters. You also have your change history. So it monitors all the parameters that have been changing. Let me, uh, bear with me one second. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. We'll go back here. So we have our change history. We can compare the function codes against the default function codes. So in this screen, you have your uh, parameter numbers and the name of the parameter. And then you can see the current value is set to one, which is SVC. The default for the VFD is two. So if you have a situation where you're uh, not certain what the parameter settings are, in the VFD, you can easily connect to the VFD and then uh, run the compare to see what the current parameters are and compare them against the default parameters. So here you see uh, in uh, parameter section 10, the uh, simple PLC, uh, the modes, uh, cyclic mode, uh, is what the current value is, uh, but what the default is from the factory is to stop once, uh, stop running uh, after one cycle. 
so on and so forth. If there are any faults that would show up on this screen, here, dry faults. And again, if I was live, it would it would show you uh, any faults uh, live. And of course, the status window for the VFD here is offline. I'm not connected at this time. A function that I have found to be very useful Uh, when programming VFDs and, and uh, examining and exploring the VFDs from Unitronics is to reset or restore the parameters to the factory default. So uh, you will be, you are able to do that. You, if you um, come upon a VFD and you see that there's many uh, different parameters uh, that have changed and you just want to reset them all to factory default, you can do that in parameter group 00, zero and it is 00 0.18. And you, the function parameters, you can restore those um, to the default. You can clear any fault records. Uh, you can um, also uh, lock uh, the function codes if need be, and a few different options here of restoring uh, default values and whatnot. So again, if you ever have a VFD and you just want to restore the function, excuse me, the parameters uh, to the factory settings, just go to 00 0.18 and choose either through the keypad or through the UMI workshop, restore to default value, and then cycle the power on the VFD uh, to get it reset and ready to run. So if we look at uh, parameter group zero, zero, uh, here you can pick different speed controls, and then the run command channel, again, you can use the keypad to run the VFD. You can use the terminal IO block uh, to run the VFD and control the VFD, or you can use the communication uh, functions. RS-485 is built into our VFDs with the B7 series. You can get optional communication modes uh, using an optional card that can be plugged in. Um, so you can choose uh, two for communication mode. And then if you do change the parameter, you will see on this screen in yellow what the parameter is set to currently. And then it will also show you the default value uh, from the factory. And then if there's a modification, it'll show you the modification time um, that it was changed. So the UMI workshop is very helpful. Uh, again, all the parameter groups are available um, in the, for the different VFDs. And that will be coming soon to our website uh, under motion control, under products and motion control and uh, VFDs. So that about wraps up the webinar for today. I appreciate uh, your attention and your attendance. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the question window is open. We're here to answer any questions you might have at this time. Again, my name is Walter Stridick. Joining me is Thomas Gomes, our motion control specialist for North America. Please uh, feel free to copy down our contact info and let us know if you have any questions regarding the VFD products offered by Unitronics.
that ends our webinar. We will uh, stay on for just a couple more minutes to see if there are any questions. Uh, and thanks again. Have a great day. All right. I don't see any questions coming through uh, the uh, questions window, but again, uh, on the screen, you see our contact information. So please uh, let us know. You can always email support at unitronics.com and uh, let us know what your questions are. So thanks again and have a great day.